again, everybody. We are live here, well, live but recorded from NAB 2017, and I am here with John Dickinson of MotionWorks.net, and I've been, I'm starstruck still, standing next to this guy. He helped teach me After Effects. I'm sure many of you out there uh, watched a lot of his stuff, but uh, he is here at NAB, and uh, let's talk a little bit about what, what you're doing here uh, at NAB this year. Well, EJ, this is my, um, it's crazily enough, this is my 14th year 14th. at NAB. And it's gone by so fast. And talking about being starstruck, the first year I came, all of the people that I learned Raptor Effects from, I was like, you know, wide eyed, like, oh my God, that's Brian Maffitt, that's Trish Meyer. It's like, but over the years, you get to know these people, become friendly. And I've seen you come over the years and seeing how you've risen. And uh, it's just brilliant. It's such a passionate industry, you know. So, so, so what are you, uh, you're demoing at Boris, right? I'm, very, I'm doing it, Boris. Yeah. So um, I've been. I was demoing a lot with Sapphire with Genarts, oh, okay. and obviously Genarts was um, incorporated into Boris. Uh -huh. So now I'm doing some stuff for Boris Effects. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. what kind of stuff are you going to be showing at the booth here? What I've been showing, I I got a couple of presentations. The first one is the um, the short film titles that I did for the Cleansing Hour, oh, okay. uh, which is a short horror film, which is my first film titles I've ever done, That's which awesome. was brilliant. And uh, I'm also showing some advanced Sapphire, so how to use the effect builder in Sapphire. Very cool. Uh, yeah. So you've been posting a lot of progression of your 3D modeling skills, and you release Make It Look Great 11, right? That is, I think, is hands down the best resource to learn 3D modeling in Cinema 4D. It's really a, a, an area that was really lacking. You guys really filled in that hole really, really well. So uh, talk about your decision to you know make that uh, sure, sure. make that series and yeah, how you yeah. wanted to get yourself into 3D modeling when as well. I, when I first started in this industry, this was back in the early 90s, uh, our motion graphics and 3D were kind of related, but not the way they are now, not with the way motion, the motion graphic artists have to know 3D now, and that wasn't the case. So I literally had a fork in the road. I need to do 2D motion graphics or 3D. And I love 3D. But I knew that After Effects and that sort of thing was going to probably be more useful for me at that time. And then finally, after the years, you know, Cinema 4D became really big, and motion graphics started to use a lot more 3D. So they, you know, both paths converged. And I always loved modeling. I was always fascinated by creating things in 3D because, after all, in 3D, the model's everything. You haven't got a model in your scene. You haven't got anything. But so being able to actually build my own stuff was really intriguing for me and it is it can be very tricky right and I watched a lot of tutorials so many cinema 4d tutorials that I kind of ran out and I was starting to watch my tutorials and max tutorials and I realized that there was a real gap in the industry especially for cinema 4d as far as uh, cinema 4d modeling training and while I was learning because I, I decided when I very f first started modeling I was going to build a Beretta pistol and I, I always bite off more than I can chew because I think <laughs> I want to model that, and I get into it, get through it, and I was like, oh my god. And just the little tiniest thing, I'm thinking, how do I do that? But obviously, with Twitter and, and the helpful community, I just asked. And a guy called Toby Pittman, he's an insane guitarist, and, and he's, he does music as his career. But he's an insane 3D modeler, which he does as a hobby in the evenings. He sent me a video, this is how you do it. He's lived in England, I never met him in person. And um, I knew as soon as I watched that video that this guy has some skills. So it took me about a year and a half, maybe two years, to convince him to do some training. And what ended up coming out of that was making it look great 11, which is like 24 hours of hard surface modeling training. And it covers all the things. I mean, when I watched it, I realized how much I didn't know. All the, all the terminology and all the basics, all the foundations. Once you watch that, you really have everything you need to really advance in hard surface modeling in uh, Cinema 4D. So. so what do you think was the hardest concept to learn to, to get, to really get, like, did you have a moment where you like, all this makes sense with 3D modeling? Was there that like eureka moment? There's been, there's been a few, there's been a few. Um, one, of them, one of them is funny, I was talking to Toby, and when you're, when you're modeling, you're looking at a mesh and you're making cards, it can get very confusing. But after a while, you tend, to, you tend to look at the mesh and you can see the, the topology. You see the topology you want. And Toby said, yeah, that's right, you're getting x-ray vision now. <laughs> so what you see is you see the correct topology in the mess. And when you start to do that, it's very liberating. 
But I think even before that, when I first started modeling, the scariest part was making something editable. Because when you start modeling, right, you're using parametric objects, and you go, oh, I can do an extrusion, or I'm using a spline and I'm extruding that. As soon as you're, it's like being in a swimming pool in the deep end and you can't swim. You're kind of, you're kind of holding the side. You don't want to let, you don't want to let go, right? Because you go, oh, you know, if I make that editable, I'm going to be in trouble. What if I get it wrong? What if, how am I going to go back? As soon as you start being comfortable with making things editable and adding knife cuts and, and being comfortable with working with topology, that's when it, things start to make sense. You just got to, you got to get in there and not be afraid, but also keep lots of versions, you know? of copies of copies. Oh, absolutely. Like that, and you've got a plug-in that does that, right? Yeah, yeah actually, yeah. Uh, storage bin. Storage bin, that's right. States and as you, uh, yeah, so yeah. That's right. I love to, love to see the feedback. Absolutely. Uh, so you're on your uh, Twitter page, you've been posting prog uh, your progression on certain modeling projects yeah. and stuff like that. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what, why, how you decided to do that and what you're working on now. Well, I've always, you know, I've had Motion Works for a long time, um, which is my website. And I've always been passionate about sharing what I learn. And I've never really, I've never got out there and said that I'm the expert. I'm, I'm, I guess I'm kind of a bit like you, a bit like Nick, discovering, learning as I go and going, hey, look, I've learned how to do this cool thing. I might not be the best designer or the, the expert at it, but this is how, this is what I did. So it's just simplifying, making things approachable. Um, and it's the same with the modeling. I, I don't know how to do everything in modeling, but as I problem solve and learn new things, I like to sort of you know, send it out there on Twitter, show people what I've done, this is how I did it. It's just a way of keeping in contact with the community, people see what I can, what I can do, and you know, sharing the end result uh, in the end. And people always say to me, I'm loving following that feed, I'm loving seeing the progression. And as I do it now, what I'm doing is I'm doing a blog post, a work in progress blog post. So I'll tweet it out and then I'll add that to the blog. So if you go to the blog, you can see all of the information and, and images so far. And then at the end, you'll see the final, you know, textured, finished piece. So You can find that on motionworks.net. You're posting all the blog posts on there as well. And, and it's a journey of discovery. I'm learning how to UV unwrap, you know, using things like 3D code. I'm learning Substance Painter, um, all, of these, all of these fantastic programs. Are you planning on doing any kind of training content for those kind of applications? The, are you guys planning on releasing another modeling series that uh, builds well, upon that? Soon, Toby actually taught me a little bit of Cinema 4D, UV unwrapping, and of course it's body paint. And those who know, know that it's a little old, it's not easy to use, it makes UV unwrapping painful. So I explored and I found 3D Coat was, was an option. And um, I've already done a small tutorial on what I learned Partly for everyone to learn, but partly for me to remember next time I have to do it. You know, you record tutorials as a reference for yourself. Um, but uh, we talked about doing some sort of UV course, but I think we're really going to wait and see what Maxon comes up with, you know, with, with their newer versions when they come out. But I know that there's, there's a big gap in UV, working with UVs in cinema. Uh, totally. But you feel, you feel powerful when you know how to do that. When you get a really great UV map, and you realize that you can put textures where you want, then you feel great. But building the model from scratch, that's the thing. When you've got a great model, it's got really good UV mapping, it's got terrific textures, lots of detail. Uh, it's, you know, I can't think of doing anything I'd prefer to do. Well, it's been great to see your progression on, on just modeling. It just goes to show, like, you didn't have any modeling experience, none, none at all. So, uh, you know, anyone can do it. Anyone you just have to take the time out to learn and I practice. And yeah, and I think you've. I, I want to thank you for putting out such a great resource. I hear all the time that people are learning 3D modeling from you, and you know you, you've. Great? Yeah, and you've been. And thank you for so much of uh, being such a influence in the community. And you're one of the nicest guys in motion uh -huh. graphics, and it's. You know, it's people like this guy here that, you know, make this industry so great and, you know, makes any, coming to NAB such a great thing. So if you haven't been to NAB before, uh, you have to come and you get to meet, you know, some of your MoGraph heroes like John Dickinson here. And uh, thank you so much for, for uh, talking with us. And, and you can see John on uh, motionworks.net and at motionworks on Twitter. Yeah, follow me on Twitter. Yeah. Follow, follow uh, John on Twitter. And he's, he's posting, uh, you're posting quick tips as well, right? Yeah, uh, modeling quick tips. I, I, I only post 
things about motion graphics and 3D. I don't post about anything else. You don't have pictures of like your cat or your dog or anything. It's, it's actually tough though. I got a beautiful little pug. It's so hard not you to post pictures of. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, we're gonna, that's a whole another podcast. All right, the podcast. Too cute. It's good. To see. Uh, all right. Thank you so much, and uh, John from MotionWorks.net and EJ from iDesign. We are signing off from NAB. We'll see you in the next video.